What is up? Everybody, welcome back to the Burn Down YouTube channel. So, it is the afternoon. It is hot as I'll get out. Uh, eh, it's almost 100. It's like 90 something, so we're good. But my coffee is probably 100, so I uh, had a little quick cup of coffee. So hopefully I can spit my words out a little bit better and function properly after uh, thrashing on this thing all day. So, we are back on the 480E and like any good non-transmission builder, uh, I haven't even uploaded the video yet of yesterday's measuring where I was trying to use fuel tubing. And I thought it was an ingenious idea, but moving it and then getting a reading, I mean, it was just hard to get it accurate. And the whole point of uh, having a dial indicator is accuracy. You're talking like thousandths of an inch. So I, the more I was working today and I thought about it, I could just hear the clickety clack of the keyboards and everybody going, what are you doing, idiot? So um, I also felt like I should give my shot a better, uh, myself a better shot at succeeding by measuring properly. Because as much as I'd like to just wing it and say it's okay, because my gut tells me that I think we're good on the end play, but my reading wasn't that accurate. So what I did is I went to my favorite store, good old Harbor Freight. So you know this thing is accurate as all get out. And uh, it's got a little arm in the clampy deal, so we should be able to stuff it down in the transmission. Hopefully this holds a little better and we get a little bit better uh, reading. And then the other reason uh, we went all cowboy on that thing and went and got some new tools is I talked to my boy Ryan today. Um, I had a couple questions. For the most part, uh, I feel a lot more comfortable once I've uh, dove into this thing. I've had stuff together and a part a bunch at this point. I didn't film any of the stuff uh, because it struggles through over here and you guys it's like watching grass grow. I um, mean, you know, honestly, if I filmed a lot of it, I'm just kind of trying to point out some interesting stuff, maybe where somebody else would get stuck if they wanted to tackle it. Um, <clears throat> but the clearances on the clutch packs, a rule of thumb is 10 thousandths per clutch. So if you have four, you want like 40 thousandths. If you got five, you want 50 thousandths and so on. There is some variance and swing in there, and like even the book, you know, you read the book, there's a pretty decent swing, and then um, I have a video that my buddy Steve, I think I mentioned it, he gave it to me. So what I've been doing is using the video as like a visual aid, but then I have the book, so I can double check to make sure the guy's not BS and a BSer over here. <laughs> and everything he said checked out, especially like the were planetary and stuff so far, so it's great because then I don't have to really reference the book and I can use that for tolerances and such so that's what i've been doing that's how i've been stumbling through this thing and again that's not really worth a video to watch a guy watching a video it'd be like transmission building video inception uh, but uh that is a long way to say i got the key points i think that i had questions on that aren't, aren't covered in either one of those i mean the book does cover it but you know ryan has the experience so it's a lot easier to talk to a human being than read uh just a book a manual and uh my tolerances in the I want to say, I'm, I'm going to get these things wrong, but I want to say it was a forward drum was 60, which was okay. And then the direct drum, which is your third gear, that one was 70. So in all reality, it should be okay, but I talked to Ryan and I'm going to tighten it up a little bit and I'm going to do that by throwing some thicker clutches in. So these are a matching set. So these are still Borg Warner high energy. That's what we're going with, but these are a uh, 80 thousandth clutch the ones in there are 70 thousands and i did measure the old clutches to the new before I, I plopped them in and they're roughly the same the other clutches weren't really worn all that bad they're roughly they mic'd out about a 69 70 clutch to the new clutch which is like a 70 but the tolerance when i measured it with the feeler gauges i did the old hoo -hoo, and um it was a tight 70 so and then you know you're pushing one side down it tilts but i was still like eh, so We'll plop those in, and then we're gonna we're gonna feel her out again, and that's easy to do. It's just a snap ring; you pull it apart. I mean, there's not too much to the direct drum, so maybe I can show you guys that and what my concern was there. Um, and then we will hook up old snake arm dude over here, and we'll get a good measurement on the back. So let me start with that. Let's start with the old snake arm, buddy. Oh, and then um, I got the new reverse band. So if you watch the other video, I just slapped the old reverse band in there to check. Uh, end plays and everything but it, it looks like it's kind of delamming and i'll show you guys kind of what that looks like too and i can show you what a a good used clutch looks like versus a bad used clutch and which why you'd want to replace them so i have some uh the direct drum look like it got some water they like puffed up and they're delaminating so i can show you what that looks like and then i can show you on the forward drum 
I probably could have just thrown those back in there fine, but you know, we're already here. So let's uh, dig the transmission boy out, kind of clean up a little bit, and then we'll put snake arm guy on there and we'll see what my measurement is. Because last time I were measuring, I was getting like a three to four, and I was like prying up on it, but I don't know how hard to pull up on it. And I was like, eh, we'll just kind of talk to Ryan before we get all Hulk Hogan on the thing and elbow drop the screwdriver and send parts flying. So let me set up, it's a clampy boy. We're gonna try it. And then I'm betting before we even move to the next clip, I'm saying that we're around the 5,000. I'm gonna say we're at 5,000. So that's where I need to be. It's five to 25. He said to error, we, we want like a dead nuts five or as close as we can to that number. So that's what we're shooting for. Let's take it apart. I'm saying that we got it. And I think the little dude was flexing, but uh, we'll see, we'll see if I was right. Let's, uh, let's get to the next clip. So let me take this over there. We'll measure it together. We'll see if I was right. <laughs> All right, before we get the new ones set up, I want to recap and show you guys. It was Sunday. There was no, nobody open. I was out here late, and I figured we would just try this, right, to get this there. But if you look at this thing, I mean, it's just not very rigid at all. See? I mean, it's not ideal. You can see that the bars on here are pretty rigid, so it holds that in place. But I, I figured, ah, this would fit. We'll wrap some tape around it. Life is good. So don't do that. Just, you know. Go get a clampy boy. So let me put that on there and then we'll try again. But I wanted to show you what we were measuring off of before and then we'll clamp this dog in there and we'll see how it works. Let's All right, we got the clamp guy here. Uh, this does not affect where this seals. So if you're gonna use something like this, make sure you're not clamping in an area where you need this thing to seal. Not that it would affect it, but I don't know. Just be mindful when you're clamping on stuff. Um, this thing is way more rigid. You know, like I, I can hit it and the, the dial's not even moving. And of course you guys can't even see it. I don't know if you can peek at it. See it? See the guy in there? Anyways, uh, we've got it to zero and then I've got it squared up. Pretty darn good. And then this thing is way more rigid. So, got a little more horsepower on my tool here. So everything is set exactly the same. I haven't messed with nothing. So you wanna put uh, the bar in here and pry up. And then of course your whole apparatus moves because it's janky. Yeah, that's a way better reading. So, because this apparatus is terrible, I'm gonna give myself a fair shake and not try to one hand everything. We'll try to hold it, move it, and actually get a good reading. And again, I'm just lying to myself uh, if I'm lying to you guys and letting you know what it is. If I'm wrong, we'll say I'm wrong, but I think so far so good. Man, these things can be finicky. All right. Bam. Yep, so we are, I'm, I'm calling it six. So, actually, I'm sorry, five. We are five, baby. Pow, pow, Catalina wine mixer. So, um, when I moved it, it went one over, but it consistently went back to the one over on the zero. Like I said, it's really hard to see, but I moved it several different times and it would go to six and then back to one, six and then back to one. Trying to set this dial bezel, the thing jumps all over, but I just did like three or four pulls five in a row and it, it kept going to the six and I was pulling up on that and I wasn't giving it the beans and I think the forces in the transmission would be a lot harder than what I was leveraging and prying on that but we're on the money and that was on a guesstimate this thing is building itself so uh, that's pretty exciting even if it wasn't it's not the end of the world I have extra shims and we could have flip flop shims and got it in the ballpark and I figured if we didn't hit a flat five I wouldn't tell Ryan if you guys wouldn't but I was thinking if we could just be as close to that as possible without being under because under is as bad as being way out of tolerance and you're looking for a five thou to twenty five thou which is a big swing but he was saying on the end play you want to be as close to that five actually his are always perfectly five <laughs> mine i was hoping for close to it but we'll take that so we did get a win there uh so good guesstimation i'm gonna pat myself on the back there uh we'll show you guys this i like it when i win by the way it's a lot easier to like do it right and be be right and just look good. I'd, I'd rather be lucky than good. Let's just say that. Uh, 
but if I was wrong, we'd pull it all apart and fix it because it is very necessary. Anyways, this is what a bad clutch looks like. So see that? See how it's all raised and icky? If you look at this boy, he's all smooth. So see those? Those are essentially the same clutch, different, different clutch packs. Oh, I'm sorry. This clutch is the same as this guy. That's a different one, but you can see how it's smooth, right? So these ones, same. So these have all been replaced, by the way. That's why I'm able to show them to you. Um, everything else, these haven't been wet yet with transmission, transmission fluid, but that's the difference between a new one and then a used one. And then, you know, this is a bad used one. This is called delamination. So um, I saw that on there. And then I also have it on the reverse band. So I got a new reverse band today, um, which is this guy here. Bada bing. And that's why I did a new reverse band because the reverse band in there looks like that clutch. It's like delaminating, but I wanted to put the stack together and check tolerances. So the exciting, cool thing, what I can do now is I'm gonna move all this crap. Uh, I will take everything out of the stack that I have in place now, and we can treat it like a final assembly. So we'll make sure everything's all wet. We'll make sure everything's good, has fluid, lube, all that fun stuff. We'll stack it all back in there. Um, we will do the new reverse band. And then I think I may have to put, this guy wasn't in there. So I think he may have to go down actually, let's see. No, no, he's higher up. So uh, just that new reverse band is the only thing that this stack is missing. So I wanna move stuff so I don't confuse anything. So this is the part where I turn the camera off. <laughs> I do my voodoo magic because I'm gonna have to refer, to refer to the video. I got my handy book out and we just need to take our time and pull everything out in order Make sure it's good and then i'm going to refer to the book and the reference everything put it back in then we're going to clamp the snake dog back on we're going to check one last time with everything as a final assembly Let's see how i did that fingers crossed in quotations and um, if that looks good again then we can move on okay so here's the stack uh the support section and this guy again I know I'm supposed to know these names. I'm sorry, guys. It's the first rodeo, but I do know that this isn't supposed to look like that. So I have a new one over here. So it should just be stock replacement. So stock, you know, we got the lugs, all that fun stuff, but you'll notice that, I don't know if you can see the light, but see how this is textured again? Uh, this may not be that bad, but see how smooth and nice this is, you know, compared to that. So that was kind of concerning. I don't know. I mean, this thing may be good. I'll save it, but it's at the bottom of the case. And I'm like, man, for whatever this dude costs, I ain't about to, I ain't trying to dig this guy out of there, you know. So this guy will go in our used clutch pile. What we'll do is we'll throw some ATF down on this guy. Um, I got this rear seal right here. It's funny because I think this, this sticks out, but I'll see if I got one now. I'll just change it on the bench. It's easier than fighting with it when it's pointing down. But I believe this is a seal for the, I don't know if this is for the, the guy, this guy here for the inside of that, but I don't know. I'm gonna clean this still too. But I believe that's what this is that seals it up. So. I'm not terribly worried about changing this guy out, but we'll get this done. Um, I've got my no-walk case bushing in there. The bearings are still down. We're gonna pull these out. I need to put some uh, ATF on these guys. So we'll do that, put them right back in order. So that'll be the first thing we do. We'll stack it back in there, run this through some trans fluid, put it back. Um, and then I am gonna make sure all this stuff has fluid. I don't think it does. So I'm gonna take this apart again I know, it seems redundant, but I wanted to check end play. So we'll take this apart and then make sure this has all the lubrication and everything it needs. Um, and then we'll assemble it back in there, put the clip on, we'll try it one more time. And I think we'll be good and that's cool. I mean, that's a big portion of it. The rest of these things you stack it on top. And I've already gone through and done all of these guys and then the pump's already done. So we're actually making pretty good progress. I'm excited. I'll bring you back when we stuff it back in and then I will show you the uh, clutch pack on the direct drive.
Okay, so here is my direct drum, right? Um, I removed this. My wife's moving trash cans. Sorry for the noise. But I removed the uh, compressed the springs, removed a little clip, and you pull this out. It's easier to measure with that thing out of the way because you need stuff feeler gauges in between here and your top um, clutch, right? So this is your clutch pack assembly. So I pull this out. See, I already had fluid in there because I thought we were pretty much good to go. So these are all new clutches. They're soaked already. These are 70 thousandths clutch. I went and I bought some 80 thousandths clutches um, today. So before I soak these, what we will do is I will take two clutches out of the stack because like I said, I already measured it was a type 70. I uh, will take two clutches out of the stack, throw these in place. And this is a five clutch stack. So we're shooting for 50 thou or roughly thereof. The thing is, uh, the guy, or even the book, it gives you a wide swing like we were talking about at the beginning of the video. And since we're pushing a heavy load, third gear is like a one-to-one, -one, I think. When you get to the higher gears, especially like this one, I think it's more critical um, on the tolerance of it. So let me throw these in, and then I'll show you guys how I measure it. We'll do a dry, and then if it checks out, we'll soak these in fluid and put it all back together. Um, if need be, though, maybe I need one, or maybe we'll go both. I'm gonna start off with both. We'll check the tolerance. So here we're gonna replace this guy. Throw this dude back down. Boom, bam. This dude, this dude. And then we put the ring back in. We'll snap a roo, ski. Snap a roo, my dude. All right. So now this, is, this thing's basically assembled, so that when you're checking, nothing moves on you. If you don't put the snap ring in, stuff's gonna move. So let me get my feeler gauge jaws. So we're at 49, let's check and see. So this stack of clutches, or stack of shims right here, feeler gauges is 49. And then you wanna insert it between here. Ooh, look at that, ooh, doggy. I like it. So technically, when you're pushing this side down, it could rock. I mean, we're just splitting hairs here, but it was a tight 70. Now with those two guys in there, this is a 49, and it, it drags. It's not real tight, it was a tight 70, but I like how that feels, so that was the All right, it's all back together, and in the last segment, I was kind of losing my train of thought because I was micing stuff out. I'm like, wait a minute, this one's kind of micing out the same as what I had in here. Well, uh, maybe my measurement was incorrect, but I felt good with the uh, 49 thou in here, so maybe we were cool. Never hurts to double, triple check stuff. But what I did realize, like, you know what? Let me mic out these old ones. And what I'm thinking is I mic some of these and that was what I was thinking were thinner, but I wanted to show you, I just put these two top ones side by side i don't know if you can see that in camera this dude's paper thin compared to that guy right i mean you can visually see it <laughs> this is just a plate steel at this point so i think that was the culprit probably with this transmission um and then maybe because tolerances or just went away maybe it, it soaked up some water did something but i don't think third gear was very happy i mean it's a 480 it was probably working but uh there you go so this stack wasn't wasn't good so um we've got this locked and loaded i feel good about it everything's lubed these are all done and clean everybody's good to go so uh the exciting part is the rear section is in the end play is measured it is locked down rock and roll so we're gonna end it here so these videos don't get terribly long because i just ramble a bunch and then you know do a little bit of work uh, but what we will do is on the next one, I'm thinking tomorrow I got to clean up because, you know, it's life and it's after work today. Since these are good to go and I feel good about all the measurements and all that fun stuff, uh, we will start installing the rest of the stack. And then maybe tomorrow, because like, I don't have to mess with the pump, which is huge because that's a lot of work uh, that Ryan did for me. The rest of the stuff is ready to rock and roll. So maybe we'll install the rest of the stack tomorrow. And if we're lucky and we're really holding it down, maybe we could check actual end play. Uh, so instead of the, the rear play, you check the actual end. So that would be killer because if we if we are in the ballpark with that, um, we are awesome. So I'm going to look up, 
brush up, brush up on how to actually get all that done so that way I'm familiar with it. So when I come out here tomorrow, it's not mouth breathing computer watching time. So we'll go in, smash some edits on some videos, mouth breathe the computer a bit, get familiar with stuff. And then tomorrow, you and I are gonna rock and roll on this thing. Uh, I'm feeling much better about it than the last couple of videos where I was like, oh man, I'm kind of over my head. But you know what? Repetitive, uh, repetitive action helps a lot. So referring to the book, the video, triple checking stuff and then be able to bounce it off one of the best in the business, which is my buddy Ryan Jens. Um, I'm feeling better about my success rate than I was when we started. So you guys know what to do. Until next time, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.